Welcome to uh, LTHS Physics. Uh, today we got a fairly difficult problem. We are going to determine the electric field created by a disk of charge along its axis as a function of how far we are from the axis. So um, we're going to start with uh, a result we already determined previously in class and that is the electric field created by a ring of charge. Okay, so for a ring, uh, we got if you are some distance x from it, the following uh, equation for electric field. Okay, so we got that equation for electric field, kqx over the quantity, uh, which is the distance from the ring to this point, any, any spot, um, to the three halves. Okay, so um, we're going to kind of start with that, and what we're going to do is we're going to take our disk and break it down into concentric rings. Since we know the electric field of one ring, we're going to build this guy up by looking at different rings and finding the electric field of each and then vectorially adding the electric field created by each thin ring. Now a quick note, you'll notice that the electric field of this guy, when you're far away, starts off weak. As you get closer, that field gets stronger, so as, as evidenced by uh, the pith ball moving away. So here, not much field. As you get closer and closer, the field gets stronger and stronger. Okay? So we're going to find the, the equation for that electric field as a function of distance along the axis from the center of the pi tin. Okay? Um, also, we're going to ignore the edge effects. So we're going to look at just the actual disk itself. So um, we're going to start with a very detailed drawing. Um, and basically, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Basically, you have a disk, and we're going to look at one little portion of that disk, a DA. So there's our, our DA, which is very much like a ring. And uh, we're going to throw some dimensions on here. Let's say the disk, um, it has a area, surface charge density of sigma. Let's say um, the radius of it is capital R. We're going to call this distance here from the center of the disk to where our ring is, we're going to call that Y. And that's going to vary from 0 to R. And then we are some distance X away from this. Now that X, that's fixed. That's a set distance. So that's not a variable. Okay. Um, the distance from this ring to this point is R. That's how far the charge is from um, this point. Now you'll notice that as the ring gets bigger, as we do a larger and larger concentric rings, little r gets bigger and bigger as well, and, it's, and it directions changes. So uh, that's what makes this problem a little complicated. Is you've got several things changing uh, as y gets bigger. So um, we're going to start with our equation for electric fields. Uh, electric field integral k dq over r squared in the r hat direction. Okay. Um, now, something to note, r hat. If you, just like with the ring we did in class, you'll notice that like this part of the ring has a down and right field this part of the ring would have an up and right field. The ups and downs cancels. Uh, also, like this part of the ring would have an into the board field. That part of the ring in the back would have an out of the board field. Those all cancel. The only component of the electric field that remains, that's not canceled, is E sub x. So we're going to find E sub x. Okay. Um, okay, well, first of all, r hat. Well, that's the x component of uh, this this electric field. So for instance, this part of the ring 
would make a field pointing down and to the right. We only want the rightward component. So if we call that angle theta, we want cosine of that angle, which will be x over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse of this right triangle would be root x squared plus y squared, okay? y being the variable we want. So uh, we're going to put that in. Um, I'll do that down here. ex equals k, the integral of dq over r squared. Um, r squared, by the way, if this is r, um, r is root x squared plus y squared. So if I square that, I get x squared plus y squared. So I'll put that in. You got x squared plus y squared. That's this. And the r hat direction is cosine theta, which is x over the square root of that. OK, now, right now we've got two variables left. x is a constant. We've got q and we've got y. So we have to relate dq to y somehow. Okay? Well, that's where uh, the area of this ring comes into play. So we know that sigma is dq over dA. Okay? So um, dq is the, the charge on this ring. It's a little, little tiny chunk of the overall charge of the disk. What's dA? Well, imagine taking this little ring, this little ribbon, okay, who has a radius of y, okay, and has a thickness of dy. So its radius is y, and the thickness is dy, a little teeny chunk of y, delta y, which if you want, might want to say. So if we take that and cut it and stretch it out, what you're going to have is you're going to have a rectangle. The rectangle is going to look like this. Okay? Its dimensions are, well, its thickness is dy. Its length is the circumference of this circle, which is 2 pi y, 2 pi r, 2 pi y. The area of that little chunk is length times width, which is 2 pi y times dy. So if I solve for dq up here, you get sigma times dA, which is length times width, which is 2 pi y dy. So I'm going to plug all this in for dq here. Okay? So then you get electric field in the x direction equals k, the integral of dq, which is all this stuff, sigma 2 pi y dy. Um, times x over this times that, which is to the 3 halves. So you've got x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. So your only variable now is y. Okay, x is a constant, pi and sigma are all constants. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to drag some of that out of the integral. So you've got ex equals k, 2 sigma pi and x are all constants. So 2 sigma pi and x are all constants. The only thing you have left up here is y dy. So we're integrating y dy over x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. Okay? Now I'm going to rewrite this and I'm going to do a couple things as I rewrite it. Okay, first of all, I'm going to put limits. What does y range from? Well, looking back, back at the picture, y goes from 0 to capital R. That, those are our limits of integration, okay? and those are going to be critical here. Um, I'm also going to rewrite this as x squared plus y squared to the negative 3 halves and move it up here. So our integral becomes ex equals 2k sigma pi x integral um, from 0 to capital R, that's the limits of y, of, I'll write this part first. You got x squared plus y squared to the negative 3 halves y dy. Okay? At this point, we're almost ready to integrate. Okay? We've almost done setting up our integral. Now, the one thing I'll mention is if I want to integrate this, like for instance, if you were going to integrate a, okay, you can't just integrate a. You need to integrate a dA. Okay, just like if you're integrating x. 
It's not just the integral of x, it's the integral of x dx. Okay? So same thing here. So same thing up here. We need to integrate this, this. If this is a, what's dA? Well, what's the derivative of this with respect to y? Well, x is constant, so that's 0. The derivative of this is 2y dy. We are really close to having a 2y dy here. All we need to do is add a 2. Where are you going to get a 2 from? Well, I'll steal it from here. So I'll take this 2 and I'll move it in here. Okay. So your integral now becomes e sub x equals k sigma pi x, the integral from 0 to r of x squared plus y squared to the negative 3 halves times 2y dy. So now you have something and its derivative ready to integrate, just like if you had x and dx. Well, now we have y squared and 2y dy. Okay. Um, the, e the easiest part of this whole thing is actually doing the integration. Uh, so this is a constant. Um, we'll leave that out of there. You got k sigma pi x integral. Well, actually, we're going to integrate, so that'll be gone. The integral of this is x squared plus y squared. Okay. Oop. You add 1 to the exponent, so that becomes negative 1 half over negative 1 half. This goes away now, because just like when you integrate x dx, the, in the answer is x squared over 2. We're integrating this d that, so the integral, you just do the inverse power rule on this. Okay, And we have to evaluate this from 0 R. Okay. Uh, the negative a half, I'll take it out and make it a negative 2 out here. Okay, so e sub x equals k sigma pi x times negative 2. All right. And then um, I'll evaluate this uh, starting with the r value. It's this this is the same thing as 1 over root. Okay, so 1 over root x squared plus r squared minus 1 over root. Um, when you plug in 0 there, you just get x squared. OK. Uh, now we can do some simplification here. Uh, I'll take the negative and distribute it here. So it'll basically switch the order of these. 1 over root x squared is 1 over x. So one way to write this would be e sub x equals 2 k sigma pi x, that minus that. So 1 over x minus 1 over root x squared plus r squared. Okay. Another common thing that they do is they'll distribute the x in there and you get an even simpler equation. You got uh, 2k sigma pi times 1 minus x over root x squared plus r squared. Okay, So that's your answer. Um, now, something to note about this answer. So this is the equation. Notice that as x gets bigger, okay, um, this approaches 0 because this approaches 1. Basically, as x gets much, much bigger than r, this becomes roughly x over x. 1 minus x over x is about 0. So as x gets big, uh, this becomes 0. If x is small compared to r, then this basically becomes uh, 1 over a big number, OK? Which case, this whole thing becomes 0. When you're close to the disk, you basically get uh, this value for the electric field, OK? Something else to note, which I just kind of mentioned, if you are very close to the disk. In other words, if x is very small compared to r, or vice versa, r is really big compared to x, um, then, and I'll, I'll write this down, if x is much, much smaller than r, if you're close to the disk, well, then it acts like a plane of charge. 
And um, what you get is, well, if you make x much, much smaller than r, then this is much, much smaller than that. And this becomes roughly 0. And you get this. e sub x tends to 2k sigma pi. Okay? And of course, knowing um, an even easier way to write this one is we know that uh, k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So you got e sub x tends to uh, sigma over 2 epsilon naught. Okay? Again, that's if you're very close to the disk. Well, someone knows about that. Um, it's constant. It does not vary with distance. Now, we will talk in class about if you have a large plane of charge, the electric field coming from it is constant. It does not vary with distance. Um, there's a couple reasons for that that we'll discuss in class. So that's probably one of the hardest ones that you would see, um, finding the electric field created by a disk of charge um, as a function of distance from the disk. So uh, thank you very much.